Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White and this is Jason's Weird Reads. And today I'm going to be doing a tag video. Um, I believe I was tagged in this video a long time ago when Cliff, uh, when Cliff did the original tag for this. And I, uh, I was going to do it because it's a really cool one, but I forgot. <laughs> and then I saw Sin from Sin's Book Nook do it uh, just recently. And uh, I was like, okay, I got to... I got to do this tag before I forget again. And of course, I'm talking about the Clive Barker books and movies tag. And like I said, I, I was really interested in this because uh, there's a Stephen King tag I believe I did recently. And Clive Barker, he's up there, man. Um, he's one of my favorite authors as well. And so I wanted to tackle this one as well. And Cliff, if you're watching, I have to tell you, man, you created a created an interesting tag. It was I had to think about this one. It wasn't. It wasn't the easiest of tags to answer. So let's get right into it, shall we? Prompt number, well, first we start off with uh, uh, the author prompt. And this is prompt number one, and it's split into three parts. The first one here is the author prompt, and it's only one question. And then there's the books section, and then the movies section. Um, so the first one here, author prompt. Choose a book written by a diverse author and or that contains diverse characters, themes, and concerns. And I went with three, actually. There's three that came to my mind almost immediately. And Mark L. Ellen Gunnels, I, I love his writing. Um, he writes uh, he writes mostly realistic horror, not too much uh, uh, supernatural horror. And I tend to gravitate more towards supernatural, but Mark Ellen Gunnels really knows how to uh, create suspense. And he, does, uh, he doesn't just write in horror, he writes... Uh, he also writes like thrillers uh, as well. He's at least he's dipping his toes into thrillers. He's written some really excellent uh, uh, thrillers like Before He Wakes uh, and uh, well, there's more, but so for some reason uh, nothing's coming to mind. But one of my favorite horror uh, novellas by him is To Be. So definitely go check those out. Uh, also, Linda Addison. Um, she's uh, a person of color and she uh, writes these really great, uh, or at least she has written one book, uh, How to Know That Your Best Friend is a Demon or something like that. It's a very long title, but it's a, it's a mesh of uh, short fiction and poetry. Uh, not just short fiction, but uh, flash fiction. That's the word I was looking for. The book is made up of flash fiction and poetry, and I love that. And Gabino Iglesias, I want to read this author really badly, and I'm going to make it happen in 2024. He has uh, been on my radar for far too long. So there's three for you right there. Uh, the books. So, uh, prompt number two is Books of Blood. Name a book that has blood and gore on the cover. This was easy for me because I bought this recently. And uh, one reason why I bought it is because of the cover. I mean, it's so nasty. <laughs> you know, it's like something I'm, that, that is potentially uh, triggering to me. And yet I went and bought the book for the cover. I didn't just buy it for the cover, though. I bought it because a lot of people have been saying how good it is. And I want to read it. I'm a little nervous to read it, but it's uh, Playground by Aaron Beauregard. And, I mean, just look at that slide. There's a little girl at the top. And this, all along the slide, there's these these saws. And at the bottom, there's like intestines, uh, a shoe that we assume has a severed foot in it. And it's actually, it's, no, it's a shoe. And yeah, it's just nasty. Like, oh, a boot too. Nasty. I mean, that is one of the most goriest covers I've ever seen. And yeah, it's kind of subtle. Because when you see it from afar, you just think it's a slide with blood on it. But you kind of have to look closely and you see the, the grisly details. <laughs> uh, okay. Prompt number three, The Damnation Game. Name a book where the where a character takes or chooses sides with the devil or demons. Uh, I don't know if this counts exactly, but I think it kind of does. I went with Horns by Joe Hill because it involves a guy who's slowly turning into a devil, but he uh, is he the devil or is he not? And I don't think there is like maybe a necessarily a choosing of sides or like a devil versus like an angel. Uh, type thing happening in that book but it definitely deals with themes of becoming a devil and it's a very kind of a bizarre book and I absolutely love it um, prompt number four the hellbound heart choose a book with a shitload of body horror and uh, I went with I don't know if it has a shitload of body horror but I went with the rust maidens by Gwendolyn Keist uh, this is 
a Rust Belt story, and it involves uh, little girls whose uh, bones start turning into rusted iron, and it's 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 kind of wacky, and uh, I loved it. Um, Gwendolyn Keist is uh, one of my favorite authors. Next up, Weave World. This is prompt number five, Weave World. Name a horror book that is set in a fantastical world. Anything with an interesting blend of horror, sci-fi, and fantasy is great. My answer for prompt number five, Weave World, is, uh, is A Story of Sorrow, book one of Flesh and Blood by Daniel J. Volpe. I haven't read this yet, but I want to because it's like extreme horror that takes place in like a uh, fantasy land a <laughs> fantasy land is a fantasy land and it's like it's, uh from my understanding it's like grim dark fantasy epic fantasy and ep that to me the the those two i don't i guess they could mesh very well but um <laughs> i'm very curious and it's very short too the first book here is only 105 pages and, uh, you know, I'm going to read the synopsis because I'm, I'm curious to see what it's about again. He should be dead, but Sorrow is a hard man to kill. Left shipwrecked after being sold into slavery, he once again finds himself on the verge of death. The sudden arrival of a huge sea vessel gives him a glimmer of hope, but this ship belongs to one of his most hated organizations, the Church of the Refining Light. Sorrow's will to live outweighs his prejudice, so he reluctantly joins the church's ex eh, expedition. Little does he know that they've been summoned to investigate a peculiar claim. Something is causing the dead to rise. Will Sorrow escape death again, or will his enemies, both living and dead, finally put him in a grave of his own? So that sounds very interesting. It's a series. I'm not too sure how long the series goes for, uh, but... It sounds fascinating to me, and I want to read it at some point. Prompt number six, Imagica. What is the longest book you have ever read? And uh, I didn't really want to look it up, but there's three contenders here. There's It by Stephen King, which I know is like 1,100 pages long, somewhere in that, in that vicinity. Uh, Imagica by Clive Barker, which is also very, very thick. Or Storm of Swords, I believe. Whatever the longest uh, book in the uh, Song of Ice and Fire series is by George R. R. Martin. I think that one actually takes the cake. I think there's one in there. Oh, you know what? It could be The Way of Kings, too, because I think uh, the paperback version of that is like 1,600 pages or some ridiculous number like that. So somewhere in there. I mean, th there's not too many horror books that, that are actually go that long, but... I mean, Stephen King's got the, uh, uh, you know, Stephen King kind of owns that. He, he does a lot of really thick uh, horror books, or at least he used to. And this was a two-part question. Uh, the second part is, uh, do you prefer shorter, sharper books, or the big door stoppers, and why? And I de for horror, anyway, I definitely uh, prefer shorter books. I, I really prefer novella-length horror. Um, the reason for that is because I think horror works better in a shorter uh, standing. It's not too many instances. Well, I guess living in the Western world, you can easily say this, but there's, uh, there, there's not too many instances of characters suffering their entire lives of horror. Uh, like I said, Stephen King does that very well. Uh, Ronald Melfi is doing that too in the book that I'm reading right now, uh, The Black Mouth. Uh, and that's like 430 some pages long. But uh, it, like I said, it's not too too often. Um, I guess it depends on uh, mental health and maybe situational. But, uh, you know, I think horror is best served when it's a situational thing that happens during someone's life. And it's like that, that one situation that that changed everything because it was so horrific. Or maybe ended everything. Uh, and usually that that doesn't last very long i mean it's uh, obvious i'm what i'm trying to skirt around is it's obvious that some people's lives are a horror story from the get-go until they they pass away but but you know and those i guess deserve longer works but uh i i, I just prefer re reading shorter books I, th I just like it uh to the point and uh and fun and if not like fun in a gory way. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I just, uh, I enjoy shorter works. 
better. Uh, you know, when it comes to fantasy and science fiction, though, it can be longer, I think, because there's more to explore sometimes, uh, depending on what the story is. Fantasy is often, like, you know, political, and it'll go into the, all those political debates and, and whatnot. And science fiction, sometimes, if it's, like, space opera, that you're off exploring things, and there can be a lot of political stuff in that as well, so... So, you know, you don't have too much political stuff to deal with in horror. <laughs> uh, unless, unless uh, you know, you're in a fantasy horror landscape like Daniel Volpe's uh, uh, books that I just mentioned. All right, prompt number seven, Thief of Always. Name your favorite YA horror book. And I went with Middle Grade, actually, and Goosebumps by R.L. Stein. My favorite, I would say, is The Haunted Mask. It's a Halloween, I think it's like number four or five in, in the... Uh, in the uh, Goosebumps series, and it's just a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. Uh, next up, prompt number eight, Cold Heart Canyon. Name a book where ghosts slash ghouls take center stage in the story. Now, I picked ghosts because there's no ghouls in this story, and it's, uh, it's a pretty terrifying story, and this book comes up again in another prompt, uh, but it's The Reformatory by Tanana Reeve Du. Um, in this book... Uh, at the very, for the first, I'd say, quarter to a half, uh, ghosts are only kind of mentioned here and there. They're not, uh, they don't take center stage. But in the second half, the ghosts take over, and it becomes uh, very much, very much a ghost story. So if you're reading the reformatory and you're like, where's all the ghosts? Uh, they come. Uh, they certainly come. And I'll talk a little bit more about it uh, very shortly here. All right, now we're moving into the movies movies prompt number nine hellraiser name a book set in hell i went with a series i'm not i think it's four books in total but i think it was originally a trilogy but i'm talking about the infernal series by edward lee all these books take place in hell and i've only read two i think of the four three or four and they are a lot of fun i really enjoyed reading them i kind of want to reread them again because it's edward lee and he's writing books in hell. I mean, how much more extreme can you get? You know, like it, it's kind of crazy, but it's good. Uh, prompt number 10, The Midnight Meat Train, which is a great movie. Uh, great, greater short story, though. Um, name a story that takes place underground. This could be subways, cave systems, mines, anything that is below the surface. And I chose a story that takes place in the exact same setting as The Midnight Meat Train, and that is... Uh, the Worm and His Kings by Haley Piper. This is a cosmic horror story that takes place in the subway, uh, like old abandoned subway systems in New York City, just like in the Midnight Meat Train, except, uh, you know what, there's a, there's kind of a similar vibe. It's kind of similar vibe, because if you think about the Midnight Meat Train, uh, there's like, you're like, what the hell's going on? When you figure out what is going on, you you gotta wonder what's going on. And uh, this book by Haley Piper has a similar vibe in that there's like this, except there's a, there's a cult that, uh, of, and, and there's homeless people and it, it's, it's very strange and you, you got to ask yourself sometimes what the hell's going on. But I really enjoyed it. I read it a couple of years ago. I don't remember it as well. I got to reread it because I want to read the sequel. So moving on here, and that would be Candyman, Candyman. Good movie. Uh, name a book based on myths, legends, and folklore. Now, my mind drew a blank on this one, so I'm going to go with what Sin said for her answer, because I read it recently for the Cryptid Readathon, and so did she. And that, of course, is, uh, at least I think she read it for that. She might not have, because I think she already read it. Anyway, uh, Devolution by Max Brooks. Uh, this is a, a very interesting uh, Bigfoot book <laughs> that takes place uh, in a, like a faraway society uh far away from society it's like its own society it's an eco society they're they're basically living there to get away from like the crap in the cities and uh you know they're trying to trying to just live off the off the land and the volcano erupts and uh it sort of sends all the wildlife their way which includes uh a clan or a family of uh of big or sasquatch bigfoot and it, it, it gets pretty violent by the end um I really enjoyed this book. It was a lot of fun. All right, moving on to prompt number 12. We're almost done here. This is the last one. Nightbreed, 
Name a novel where the reader is more likely to feel sympathy for the creatures slash monsters than the humans in the story. And I, as a smartass, I said Cabal, <laughs> because it's the same as Nightbreed. Cabal, Nightbreed was the adaptation of Cabal, and ha ha ha, right? Funny, funny, funny. But no, I'm actually going to go with uh, the Reformatory, because, uh, you know, normal haunted house stories or haunted asylum or or old schools or or a reformatory such as this one the ghosts would be the scary thing but in this story the ghosts you actually sympathize with the ghosts and it's the humans that you fear you very much fear the humans in the reformatory but to Reeve do it's a fantastic book and i highly recommend reading it all right and the 13th prompt or the prompt prompt is uh tag people i'm not going to tag anyone for the simple reason that i don't know who did this there was a lot of people tagged in the original video and i was one of them thank you cliff uh but if you seen this video and you watched it and you're like that's a pretty cool tag video i want to do it myself then consider yourself tagged i highly recommend you do it because you got to sit down and you go through all the books you've read and you're like ah oh, that works that works that works and it's just a lot of fun in the end so thanks again to cliff for taking me i only apologize for me taking so long to get to it but to be honest i don't generally do i've done quite a few tag videos this year actually so maybe i am starting to like them again i don't know but I, for a while i went through a period of eh, i don't like tag videos but this was a lot of fun so uh thanks again everyone who watched thank you for watching uh and keep being safe Keep being creative, my weird friends, and I will catch you guys in the next bookish video.